And yeah, we're recording. Okay, everyone, um, welcome to the March, whatever the date is, March 24th date of the JCPC meeting. And my the first order of business is for me to call out everyone's name to make sure we can all hear each other and be heard. So I will just, um, I've already been talking with Sean and Sonia, and but I'm gonna call out the committee members' names. Anna? Um, Mandy? Present. Alex? Present. Farah? Present. Jennifer? Present. And Irv? Present. And we don't, um, Irv, I think you're the only one who hasn't had the honor of doing minutes for JCPC. <laughs> that would be an error. That would be an error. All right. So we, what we can do if people right. want to is this meeting will be mainly to go over the report and focus on the substantive areas so we can make the meeting, the minutes be fairly short to say we reviewed the document and we made changes, you know, and then we can list any substantive ones if that's all right with people. So we'll do a short version of minutes. Um, I mean, we'll capture whatever we do from this um, because I don't want any, I can't take minutes while doing sharing. So is, does that sound like a reasonable approach? And this is being recorded correctly. Is that correct? Yeah, no, there, there, there will be, you don't have to take minutes during the meeting. You can All look right. at- so I, As long as I can access the recording, I can do the minutes. Perfect. Then we will send you the format. Sean will right. send it to you. It's an, an easy format and then just do it off the recording and we get the record and we can send you a copy of the recording right after we close down the, the meeting. You'll have it by tomorrow. Okay. I can do that. Perfect. Thank you for the volunteer. Great. I'm not volunteering, but I'm doing it. <laughs> okay, so I think um, for those who just came in, Sean needs to leave at six o'clock tonight, a sharp, but Sonia will be staying with us. So we're going to start with him showing the screen of the document that everyone saw yesterday with the only changes on it since yesterday is the blanks where there were numbers missing. Sean has filled in the numbers. Um, and some of them, I started to just put them in in um, a non-track change, but as we go through, he's, and he'll double check them again, that a few changed from the very beginning and or I didn't get them quite right. I think most of them were changes um, from the most recent. And the other thing is after we're finished with this document, it calls for a few tables. He sent us those tables and he will incorporate them in. So they're not in it yet. So what I'd like to do is um, organize the discussion tonight around anything where people think th there's a substantive issue, meaning uh, the recommendation doesn't sound quite right, and or we never said we would recommend that, or there's wording later. I know Anna's aler Anna has alerted me that she doesn't think we really had a full discussion of the resident proposal, and she wants to bring that back up. So what I'd like to do is just have people, um, I guess on the easiest way would be to start on page one, Sean, if you go down to scroll down to where we're making the first set of recommendations. Um, these were what we discussed last week as recommendations. Alex has sent me some ex excellent additional wording to explain these a little bit better on the first page. Um, but I wanted to make sure that um, we weren't missing anything on these three main areas. Um, and Irv, you missed last week, but one of the things Sean came back with is he had discussed with the town manager um, the issue of the HR study and the assessor study, and also the issue of Cherry Hill Golf Course equipment. And there's an agreement to go back and take another look at those capital requests and see if we can lease or borrow or get used equipment, and also to try to address the issue of it doesn't, these others don't fit in the capital cost. And we all thought changing the definition of capital cost to revise it in a way that restricts it to these particular kinds of studies that go over more than one year 
was an acceptable way. So these were discussed last week, but I just wanna check whether anyone had anything else major on this page. Jennifer. Just with regard to the Cherry Hill um, bullet point, I feel like it's a, um, I feel like it's, it's very sort of prescriptive at the end when it says um, potential for free access for Amherst Public School students. Just in that, like I know we've talked about um, children and students using the golf course, um, but I, don't, I didn't, and, and I know we've talked about doing it for free. And at the time, I wasn't clear if what was meant was like golf, the, the high school golf team, or just like students using it as part of their school day. Like, I guess a couple of thoughts are like, I think uh, young people who are young people in Amherst, you know, live in Amherst, even if they don't attend our public schools. So I wouldn't necessarily want to restrict it to just public school students. And um, I don't necessarily even think that like free access for young people is what we're thinking, because like the pools aren't free. They are like low cost and subsidized. So I don't know, it's just, just a little prescriptive, prescriptive to say free access and for public school students. I think I think just, just more creative uses for the golf course that benefit young people. Um, just just to sort of broaden it a little bit. So, um, if we, so just so if we did potential for recreational access for Amherst students. Yeah. Does that edit work? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> and it takes a, it. And, and Alex had suggested wording expanding recreational use of the facility and providing, right. you know, so we, we it's it gets at the sense that it's not just for golfers and it's a recreational area. Right. So Irv. Um, yeah, I, I really uh, appreciate the uh, wording in the Cherry Hill uh, and especially the recommending the exploration of, uh, of leasing the equipment. I'm not sure about used equipment, but leasing the equipment is always a viable opportunity uh, when cash flow uh, is, um, is a problem. Uh, because it allows you uh, to lease the equipment, use the equipment, and at the end of the term, be able to purchase that, purchase that equipment at, at, at its depreciated cost. So I really value that a lot. Alex? Um, yeah, I just, I, Jennifer, I appreciate your comment. Um, and I, I added the expanding the recreation Rec uh, expanding the recreational use of the facility, but I also like your clarification. And maybe we change children to youth, make it a little bit, a little bit broader category. Not that that was your wording, I'm just, <laughs> what's up yeah. there? <laughs> no, I think that's great. Yeah. Well. Um, I thought we had talked about making it uh, reduce cost to Amherst, to the Amherst community. We definitely did, and you know, I I got the free access. So if we if we say potential for recreational access, we could say at reduced cost. So yeah. is does that to me? I I would like to do that. So I don't want to put words, and it doesn't have to be free. Uh, and, and as as opposed to the regular golfer fee when they come on and play non holes, you know, it's not right. yeah. But we're also saying that besides, you know, access to golf and other stuff, the community still gets to use the space. Like it, we don't it, pay when we go sledding there. Yeah, no, everything is free at Cherry Hill yeah. if you're not playing golf. Yeah. Right. Thank you. So Jennifer, would, Jennifer are, still has her hand raised. I just, so I'm just wondering, do people want to add the word at reduced costs or leave it as 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 is? Jennifer is saying no, and I, I, I don't, it, this is not, it is just a recommendation. So okay. we can say this is not, the town manager doesn't necessarily do anything we're recommending here, but. And Kathy, I would say as much as we can stick to sort of the capital element of, um, yep. okay. I think, not that that's a bad recommendation, but I think that's where it starts to cross over okay. into other territory. Okay, so let's go to the next page then. Actually, sorry, I have one more comment on this page, which is just regarding the third bullet point. So the current definition of capital costs does not include anything about studies, right? Right now it okay. includes studies if they're related to a um, 
<clears throat> like a tangible capital project. Right. And so we actually want to we actually want to expand the definition to cover studies that may be expended over more than one year. So it just I'm just confused by the word restricts. Like I know what you're saying, um, you want to expand to studies, but only studies that um, expand go, that go over more than one year. So just like I just was confused about the word restricts because we actually want to expand the definition. Yeah. Well, it says, yeah. But I take any wording. I mean, Anna brought up that she didn't want to just create a huge loophole that everything could come through. Then right. Mandy talked about. Um, so I think I think the town manager's recommendation back to her is that we add this to the definition of capital costs. So it's how do we want to add it um, is the question, Alex. Yeah, so I had proposed language that I sent to Kathy for, for exactly that, to change to say, while these types of studies have typically been included under the capital budget, it was noted that they do not conform to the current definition of capital. We recommend revising the definition of capital with wording that specifically includes periodic study expenses that may be expended over more than one year and which would not otherwise be included under an operating budget. So Kathy has that language, but and yeah, so, I, I agree. So that can't, I, I think that I thought that wording really was a good revision of this, Alex, to make it very clear what we're talking about. Irv. I, um, you know, I wish I were there last week, but um, that particular definition leaves a hole large enough to drive a Mack truck through uh, in relationship to uh, future kinds of expenditures related to that particular definition. Um, and um, it, it, is, it, it doesn't work in my mind. Um, if you leave it in as is, uh, as, as being, being suggested, I can guarantee you that over in the future years, people are gonna take advantage of that for all kinds of things not related to capital. So Alex's wording talks about um, doesn't conform, but expands. The, the issue, Irv, is if it goes in an operating budget and you don't spend it all in a year, you lose the money. And these types of studies go over more than one year for the assessor. And so you don't, it's a use it or lose it in an operating budget. So traditionally they have always been, literally always been in the capital budget and they only come up with a certain amount of period. Right. And, 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 and it's I, I, not every study. So the planning department, you know. Yeah. So I won't, I won't oppose that, this, but what I am saying is that if, if the um, if, if other departments have studies to be done, like the appraisers, then why isn't it under their budget? What prevents them from being, prevents this from being under their, their budget or coming in under their budget or any other department who, has, who wants to do studies? Uh, because once you, once you do this, then why not other departments being able to say, hey, we have to study and ship all under capital? Because the town manager won't let them in. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, you yes. know, basically, I mean, <laughs> Kathy, so I think, I mean, so I think um, I, I've heard what Irv um, has, has shared. I think we can, we can work on a definition um, with the town manager that allows for the things that we've typically done, but tries to address that loophole concern that Irv's raised. Because I, I agree with Irv, like we don't want every yep. every planning type of thing to come through capital. It's, it's sort of like these multi-year projects um, that we want to focus on. So so I think that recommendation, we can bring that back and work with the town manager and accounting to figure out a way to um, to, to open, to, to, to include the stuff we've been doing, but not make it so broad that every planning project can come through. OK. So the next uh, item, oh, as we discussed this last week, um, and Sean brought us feedback from the town manager that this idea of a reserve fund for price volatility was a good idea and that it could be funded um, uh, but with repurposed unspent capital funds. And this year, this current year, there it's, could be starting with $85,000. Alex sent in some uh, potential 
minor rewording, but I think we all agreed this was a good idea. So I'm just double checking on this. And then Alex, you can talk about what you're what you're rewording on this. And this was to address the fact that when they price it at the beginning of the year, um, they don't know for sure what the price is going to be and whether the word volatility is right is, is guard against price increases might be a better wording than volatility. Um, but everyone was saying that there's a lag between when they first put it on the list and when they actually go and get it delivered. And then we see this big price increase. So this would be a risk fund basically to guard against it. Um, and the $100,000 was suggested by the town manager. We That didn't come um, initially from us. Irv, you need to unmute. I love, I love this, um, this, this paragraph. I think it's unbelievably welcome in terms of going forward given uh, the price volatility of vehicles and other kind of capital expenses, expenses going forward in the future year. This is a, an incredibly great addition. So then the last paragraph of a recommendation is that the town manager doesn't need to hear this, but that he will have to balance the budget. So it's basically, it's not, we're looking at a budget that's what Sean now, we're about $81,000 in your recent calculation over the amount of money there is to spend. Um, and you had told us this information last week. So I think you said the ambulance fund might pay for the lease payments for defibrillators. Mandy had heard ambulance, but I don't think it's ambulance. It's just defibrillators. No, so it was both. Um, so okay. it, yeah, Sonia looked at the the balance in there and we feel confident it can pay for both. Um, and if we couple the the defibrillators coming out with um, reducing the cost at Cherry Hill, because uh, looking at a lease or a used option, um, those two items should get us pretty close to being balanced. Okay, so I'll take out the strike through on ambulance because that's accurate. So we um, so next the next set were these were more comments. Um, I think everyone liked this was when we were going through this. We thought the doubling of the sustainability fund made sense, um, and some of this language borrows from last year that it would be good to get a regular report back on how the fund has been used. Um, on the facilities repair fund, this was noted by the fire department that by moving to a broader set of buildings, meaning the fire department's buildings in the general facilities fund, having Jeremiah be looking at it, enabled them to focus on um, prioritizing within vehicles and equipment. And this may not be the best wording, Alex question whether this is wording quite right. So they, they basically says that their wording was, we don't have to force be forced to choose between fixing the building or buying needed equipment. Um, so there may be better wording that we can put in here. Um, but these are more commenting on, we thought this was a good change. Um, so, so I stuck them in and these came up last week, a couple of them did on inventory. The main thing on inventory that we talked about was that we can't necessarily match the new trucks that are being requested with the trucks that are on the list in terms of their description. And it would be good to, to make the inventory more specific. And then Anna, I think you had one other issue on inventories on, on whether we wanna say anything here or not. You had brought yeah. it up in the discussion. Yeah, so basically I was just trying to figure out the best avenue for um, writing a memo to finance about including uh, increased sustainability measures in the inventory. And I just wasn't sure if it was something that we thought we should mention in the report or if it's just something y'all want to leave to me to write a memo on later on. Um, I'm fine either way. Yeah, Sean. So uh, um, remind me if there's something, there might be something beyond this, but there is a town manager goal um, <clears throat> for this year to basically show how we would convert the fleet to um, carbon neutral or reduce carbon. Um, so that is a goal that we have to 
it's stated and we're working on. Um, so I don't know if it goes beyond that or if it, if that would it, achieving that goal would cover it. It covers it partially. So the other part of it that I'm and, well, and it might cover the whole thing. So this is where timelines aren't perfect, right? But um, I'm talking with ECAC to see if um, they want building inventories as well uh, around that as we move to net zero and as the net zero bylaw impacts more buildings, um, hypothetically moving forward. So it may go beyond vehicle, but that's the like five year plan or whatever, right, that you're referencing. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that's great. So it, it's a little bit of a yes and, but I'm hoping to have a more firm answer from them uh, sometime soon. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean, I think I'm, I'll leave it up to the committee whether or not you want to reference that we may be coming forward to finance with a different ask. Because this report is going to the town manager, I'm not necessarily sure if it's as relevant for him because it's it's something that would come from council. You know, you know, I think it would, I, well, my reaction is, I think it would be good for you as a counselor to bring it up through the council and come right back to finance because we don't have enough to say anything right now on it. Yeah. Um, and it would get, just get buried here in this paragraph. That's totally fine. Okay. I'm gonna learn how to write that kind of memo. Okay, so next, um, I'm just looking at. All right, Alex, you call out because you're you're the one whose sharp eyes saw where I think it's in the next paragraph. There's a recommendation in it that Alex noticed where I, beyond that first beginning, there are some words in here we recommend that we didn't have a discussion on them. So Alex, can you walk us through when, when you see them? I think this is the first one, right? Sure, yeah. In the first paragraph, about halfway down, it says that we recommend that the town manager with the town council assess whether the projected timeline for DPW and the fire station building are realistic and affordable. I just didn't think we actually had that conversation and made that recommendation. So if if we as a committee want to make that as a recommendation, that's fine. But I just didn't want to put a recommendation in that I didn't think we had. So, Mandy, that was a good catch, Alex. Um, I think I would lean towards not delving into that since some of the first one sentences are we're not in charge of that and so that might delve into something we don't want to dip our toes as jcpc in so so i think we could just delete the sentence that's kathy thinking out loud um, rather than right oh, is that okay with everyone yep i think that would be fine i also highlighted that sentence like oh i, I didn't realize that <laughs> i didn't know that <laughs> I mean, we are going to bring that up in the finance committee. I mean, in part because the budget isn't balanced when going forward. Um, so it's something that's going to have to be addressed. But, yep. And for if you keep this up, you're going to be made vice chair because that's really all I do is vice chair. <laughs> Come back to me. And you're doing, you're catching all the same things. So careful. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the next page uh the next one was where are we page. okay this is the highlight okay it's right here in the advance of yeah. he's made we talked about this that there's we've been making road and sidewalk but when you look forward we we have to drop back down and so oh, this yeah. this was a sentence directly out of last year's jcpc report but we recommend that he highlight trade-offs when presenting the capital plan. So that, um, so it, in that last sentence. So the question, I literally just kept it from last time because um, there are some tough choices we're making in this plan. And I thought it would be good for the town manager to say that when he does it, but we don't have to recommend that if people aren't comfortable with it. It's a big drop down so was, on roads and sidewalk. Yeah. So the question so is just a, on yeah, that we recommend sentence, right? I mean, it was good, Alex. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. you, because we didn't have a conversation about that sentence. So this is a, a oh, sorry. Pardon? I know we didn't have a conversation about it, but I think it's a good thought um, that, that it's, I, I like the idea of including it. Okay, so I think that's what you're doing, Alex. You're flagging it throughout on do we actually want to say yeah, yeah, yeah. this, right? It's, it's not a necessarily take it out. Okay. I'm, I'm valid. I'm trying to validate everyone right now. Good job, Alex. <laughs> Kathy, I like it. 
That's my okay. That's so my seeing no one say delete, we'll move on to the next place. Everything else, the comments I've got and the others are all copy edits, and I got several excellent copy edits, and I will honor all of them. So I'm just looking, Alex. You know your um, what you've marked up better than I do. I'm seeing. You know, people can call out if they have anything on any of these pages. Uh, on, I know we've got one coming up from Anna. My so next, where, my next, where's uh, the paragraph? Okay, my next comment's on the top of page five. So, okay, I'll, so Anna, so where is mine's the, not a, is somebody's? So I'm just doing. So Anna's is on the resident proposal, and that's on page four. Sean, it's on the top of page four. Sean, if you stop there for a second, go back up to the modified. We need a period. That's all. Right here. Um, yeah, thanks. There's, I have to tell you, the copy edits far did found every missing <laughs> space, every missing, the, this sentence didn't have a period on it. You did a fabulous job on finding these, yeah. So since we were since we're just talking, uh, since Mandy Joe just brought up the period in the balanced budget para shortfalls should be one one word. I was just going to email you, but you could just do it here too. Sorry. Okay, where, but don't where go. Is that? So do where is that one? But just why don't you email it to me? Because this is the section we do need to talk about the resident proposal. Anna, this is on. This is your. This is the issue you wanted to raise right here. Yes. That we're on this page. So I, Anna emailed me that I didn't say this quite right because we actually didn't reach a conclusion on what we were going to do with it. And also she didn't, this came up right at the very beginning meeting and it wasn't uh, clear that it was going to be discussed. So Anna, why don't you speak to this? Um, because I hadn't realized how much process you'd gone through before it came to us as a resident proposal. Sure, and, and I appreciate um, Sean and Kathy, your willingness to let me talk more about this. Um, I will ask Sean, there's Rob Moore is in the audience. Is it possible to bring him in for this as well? Um, so what I want to just do is, is yeah, when this Kathy? came up on, oh, what? Yeah. Kathy, that's all, okay. Sorry, is that okay? Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Um, so what I want to do is just briefly, one, apologize. On our first meeting, I didn't know that I should have brought a presentation. If you've worked with me before, please know that that was like single-handedly one of the most stressful moments because I very much like to be prepared. Um, and so, hi, Rob. So um, where this came hey. from, and I do have uh, a visual of a timeline to show you all, um, if that's okay if that's okay, just because I'm a visual person. Um, I'm waiting for Mandy to tell me it's not okay, but I'm gonna keep going until she says it's, she says it's not. Yep, so, so, uh, <laughs> so essentially what we're talking about here is funding for a feasibility study for Middle Street to look at improving pedestrian safety and uh, pedestrian and cyclist safety and um, general kind of traffic calming. So where, okay, all right. Here. Um, and so Rob and Lisa are here. They live on Middle Street and um, they brought this to my attention last year. So I wanted to just quickly run you through this. Um, thank you to Lisa for sending me these pictures today. So the overview, and we're shifting it a little bit based on information from Sean that was super, super helpful. Thank you. Um, so initially, we had sent in a request, or I had submitted a resident request for um, funding for a feasibility study for Middle Street. After speaking with Sean yesterday and this morning via email, um, it what makes sense is to ask to increase the amount allocated for DPW to do studies in order for them to do this study because we cannot prioritize a project as JCPC. It's a little confusing. So how we got to this point. In September of 2021, the folks on Middle Street brought the issue to a District 5 meeting. I was not a counselor at that point. October 2021, the Middle Street residents then go to a TAC meeting, a Transportation Advisory Committee, Council? Committee meeting. And um, the, all the minutes read is 
discussion was held about various factors, which was a little bit hard to now sleuth through. I spoke to someone who was on TAC who said, we, um, we did talk about this issue. And uh, what we decided was that, you know, the most reasonable thing would be to make it a one way and add a bike lane, but we'd need more study on traffic and stuff in order to do that. So again, it kind of gets back to a study might be helpful. Um, also in October, uh, I had emailed town staff, uh, I believe it was Dave Domek, to ask about the resident uh, request form and said, I have no idea how to estimate funds cost of a sidewalk. I don't know. I know it's different than just concrete costs. So what, how do I do this? And um, Dave, I believe it was Dave, replied that, you know, this makes more sense to apply for an engineering feasibility study, not a, um, a sidewalk directly, because you don't know if it's possible, you don't know which method makes sense, et cetera. Um, I also reached out to the chair of, T of TAC and um, explained the issue and asked for their thoughts on how, how to price this out. The response that I received was that council is the keeper of the public way, which is true. And that request for any changes need to go through the council per the TSO public way review process. So now I'm sent in another direction. Um, and I'm not even the one who has been starting this from the beginning. So again, many props to Rob and Lisa who have already gone through the whole washing machine before I jumped in. So I submitted the form in December uh, seeking 50K in funding for an engineering feasibility study. And then today, uh, clarity on the process is leading to a shift. I will say, that you know, Rob and Lisa um, have been speaking to their neighbors on this. We have resident petition or resident support signatures on this as well. Um, and it's really, you know, it's it's gone now to so many different groups that it's really confusing where to go. And and I think that what was reflected in the presentation was that it go back to TAC, but we've been to TAC now twice. And so I think it's it's a little tough to to navigate this process. Um, and so just to kind of illustrate what we're looking at here, uh, Middle Street is a 30 mile an hour road. Um, as you can see, it is very narrow uh, and it's very residential. Houses are close to the street. Um, there is no sidewalk, there's no shoulder. Uh, there's the, uh, as you can see on the, off to the side, there's swales um, or runoff ditches. And so it's really hard to walk on the side of the road. There are 60 houses directly abutting Middle Street and then 27 additional houses on Sherry Circle, Blossom Lane, South Orchard and Barry. Um, the road is within two and a half miles of Crocker Farm at its furthest point and 1.4 at its closest. And part of it is within three quarter mile buffer um, of a main, I don't know if it's defined as a village, yeah, village center. Um, and so just a couple more images. So this one was really helpful. Uh, Lisa took this today to show you just how much space a car takes up on that road. Um, and she cited in her email to me today a terrifying example. There's someone on the road in a wheelchair. Um, and when they go down the road, they are in the road um, and cars have to see them break and move around them. Uh, and that's, you know, there's so many people walk and bike on that road in order to get to the common, in order to get to Brocker Farm, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so just demonstrating like if, if someone were walking in this space right here, uh, the car would have to go completely into the other lane or stop if someone was coming in the way. Um, and then last thing I just want to briefly touch on, Middle Street is a preferred route according to the Bicycle Pedestrian Network Plan, and it's rated a three out of four on the level of stress analysis. Um, oh, and I put that twice just in case you missed it the first time. So uh, the... the um, what I was going to put in this second text was you'll see Southeast Street was a four out of four. Southeast Street is a faster street. It's also a wider street and it has a shoulder. So that for me is the big difference with, with um, Southeast Street versus Middle. So I'm gonna stop there and I would like to invite Rob and Lisa to introduce themselves and share anything that they would like to. Um, and then I will happily take any questions. So hi, Rob and Lisa. Hi, uh, thanks everyone for, for having us. Um, and thanks for your attention here. Um, we are, um, as Anna, first off, Anna um, did a, an excellent job summarizing where we're at and um, what the, the issue is. Um, I just like to point out that we're here on behalf of actually a number of families in the area, uh, in Middle Street and uh, in the area. Uh, the fact is that five to seven is a challenging time for those of us who have young families. So um, it's, a number of us wanted to attend but couldn't. Uh, that isn't of course, for lack of interest, 
Um, as Anna mentioned, uh, we organized a petition. We actually held an event at our house that Anna attended. Um, and actually it was pretty well attended this fall to promote the issue. That's where we got uh, many signatures. There is significant interest here. Um, a lot of people, as Anna said, walk up and down the street. We have uh, young children who would like to be able to bike to, uh, to school, to Crocker Farm, um, but uh, it's quite dangerous for them to do so. Um, the side of the road, aside from just being uh, just a difficult place to have to jump into whenever a, a car speeds by, also um, there's, there are a lot of, uh, of there's a lot of long grass that has uh, uh, quite a few ticks in it. So um, that's, we've actually experienced that with our, with our daughters. They've um, gotten uh, ticks just from walking on the road and have, from biking actually on the road, uh, but being as close to the side as possible. The long grass is just, uh, just tons and tons of ticks there. So um, we're, we're concerned uh, about the safety here. It seems likely to us that um, sooner or later someone's going to get hit. Um, that's probably a potential source of liability for a town, to be honest with you. So that's something I think that should be uh, taken into account as well. Um, we're, we're pleased that this is um, this is on the docket and uh, is getting your attention now. But um, we're we'd would really appreciate um, any guidance anyone has about uh, what else we can do and what directions we can take this. So I. I thank you both for joining us in the comments. And I think what we're going to do is put you back into the public audience at this time. And we may, we wouldn't normally do this at the end of the process, but we should have had you on at the beginning of the process. So we missed that step um, in terms of notification. So I just wanted to make sure we did that. So, so I think Anna, what, what you're, what you wanted to focus on is looking at what we do want to recommend here rather than the way it's written right now is we had this proposal and we're saying it should go back to TAC. Um, so do you have su a suggestion? And then the question is um, whether the, what the committee wants to do. So I just would first like to hear what the suggestion is. Yeah, so um, as is written this year, so if we kind of ignore the, ignore the paragraph about the resident request, uh, DPW every year does apply for funds for studies for things just like this. Um, they applied for $50,000 this year and, and we seemingly are, are recommending that, which is fine. Uh, Middle Street is a little bit of a complicated street, which is why the request for a feasibility, an engineering feasibility study is, looks pretty high. Um, so I would like to increase the uh, DPW uh, allocation for studies. Um, I'm going to say by 50, and I know you're not going to let me have that for much longer, but um, because DPW should be able to do more than just this one study, even if it, you know, hopefully that the next step that's outside of JCPC is now encouraging DPW to prioritize this as one of their studies in, in the fiscal year. But if this one study would eat up their, all of their funds, then they're, uh, I don't see how they would want to take it on. So. I'm asking us to increase the DPW allocation for studies by 50,000 instead of having it be a standalone resident request because as was stated, uh, JCPC cannot allocate to specific uh, infrastructure projects like this. According to the intel I have gotten, but I've gotten a lot of different intel and so I am happy to get clarification. Right, so, so Alex, Alex, you might want to speak because this had come up a few years ago too as wording um, that um, a proposal came in and then it was folded into sort of a larger executive decision. And then Sean, I don't know whether, does DPW have other flexibility in his bud their budget? Does their budget have to be increased or do they actually have flexibility? I just want to get some factual information before we then have a, what yeah. do we want to do here? Yeah, I don't know that. Um, I don't know that funding. I don't. I have to talk to Guilford. I don't know that funding is the reason why this study what hasn't been done um, or wasn't done. It could be the case that increasing funding would make it more likely that it's done. Um, but I just don't know what TAC has discussed relative to this project and if this project is in a list somewhere. Um, and if it if it isn't a list somewhere, where in that list it is. Um, so that's why speaking with Anna, I said yeah, we could. We could request more funds for this air um, for this line, but I still would have to talk with Guilford to find out um, the status. 
So Irv and then Mandy. Irv. I, I, you know, given that I live in South Amherst and given that I have also taken my life in hand walking on Middle Street, um, I, I totally understand where Anna is coming from and the other residents on the street. However, I'm, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm really uncomfortable in terms of going forward with this, except for that um, this should definitely go to TAC first. Uh, yeah, and, yeah and, and, and I really think that that should happen. I also uh, would like for us to uh, think about how, we, how do we proceed with proposals that are initiated by A, members of, of this committee or, and also members of the town council. I, I feel uncomfortable with that. I, I, it, it's almost um, like there's an uh, access privilege that could be perceived. And, and I don't want us uh, to get into that or be, be subjected to that kind of criticism. And this has nothing to do with the merit of the proposal. It just has to do with what I consider to be a process question. Can I respond, Kathy? Uh, sure, and then let me take Mandy, because I think you want to respond to the counselor side of this, right? Yeah, yeah, I just want to say. So, uh, Irv, I, I submitted this before I was elected or before I was on this committee. Um, I do recognize that it's hard now that I am on it, and I will... Uh, if there's, you know, because it's not a resident request anymore. Um, if, if we broke them all out, it's absolutely something I would abstain from voting on. I think the, the challenge for me is that I sent the form out to folks and it was so confusing to navigate that even before I was elected, I understood enough, clearly not because I still did it wrong, but uh, I understood enough to at least write it. And so that's where my initial proposal, like we really need to relook at that because if we're soliciting resident requests and the form is completely confusing to everyone, why, why are we doing it, right? Um, when I also sent it out, I had asked whether it made sense to um, have multiple people submit a request or if it made sense for it to just come through one person and town staff said, just send it once, don't have everybody submit it. Um, and so, you know, I think, in retrospect, I, I should have apologized to Sean in advance and had multiple people submit it because I don't want this to be, I recognize the position that you all are in because I'm sitting in the room and if you would rather me leave the room to discuss it, that's fine. Um, but I, I think that the fact remains that that form was, was really confusing to some very smart people uh, and, and that's why I ended up doing it. But I was not elected, I was not in office at the time. Um, Mandy. Yeah. Um, so I'm not in favor of changing the rec the the wording we have here. Um, Middle Street is just one of many streets that residents walk on the street on very small streets, small width streets, two way streets in town. Um, you know, just another example in South Amherst in District 5 is Station Road from Amherst Woods and Amherst Hills down to the actual rail trail. Um, big hill, big everything, very small leeway. You know, there's plenty of places in North Amherst where residents are walking. And so, you know, I think we don't get into that prior, prior prioritization. That's for TAC to figure out what is the next study in the next area that really should have sidewalks figured out next. Um, and in terms of the money, um, I thought we talked about this with Guilford when he was here and he seemed, you know, the last time we, we recommended funding for one of these, I think it was three years ago, my first year on, the JCPC and that study is just being started this year um, because that was not prioritized. Um, and so I, 50,000 seems like a reasonable amount every year to do a study, partially because 
once you do a study, if you decide you need to go forward, you have to fund that one, then you don't want that study sitting there for 10 years before you do anything with it. And so if you do too many studies a year, what's the next step? And so I, I hesitate to even recommend increasing the amount of money for studies in the capital program because we already know the next few years of spending for capital are gonna be really tight. And so we don't wanna complete more studies than we could actually then potentially add sidewalks to within a reasonable time after the study is completed because otherwise you just have to do the study again given changing engineering requirements. Alex. Thanks. Um, so both Irv and Mandy said exactly what I would say and what my feelings are about this. Um, and um, also, I I am not comfortable, nor do I think it's our position to um, change a department head's budget. I mean, I, we we have department heads for a reason to prioritize their budgets, and so I am not entirely comfortable with that. Um, but for information purposes, um, so what Mandy was referring to was an FY20. And so there's precedence for how this has been handled in the past. Um, and so, and, and I think it's important, Anna, to separate out the resident request process, which I think we all agree needs to be tweaked. It's been a work in progress ever since it was adopted. And you know we've all agreed that that needs to happen. And so I think, the frustration with that process doesn't mean the result should be that we should fund something, right? So I think they're two okay. separate issues. And so what the precedent has been in the past, so in our, um, in our report for FY20, um, we basically said there were three um, sidewalk and paving requests um, from residents and they were in our report referred to TAC, which I know <laughs> it worked apparently that round. I don't know why it's different this round, but basically the language was that they were referred to TAC, um, the town manager and the superintendent of public works, since the decision of what projects should proceed in that fiscal year is an executive decision and not a matter determined by the capital budget. And so I just think for all the reasons that have already been articulated, um, I've walked Middle Street, I've canvassed Middle Street, I in no way doubt I'm very familiar with Middle Street. And in fact, I would argue that 116 to the Crocker Farm entrance on Shays, where you potentially have kids who walk to school also doesn't have a sidewalk. Southeast Street from Andrews down to, you know, like we could go on and on with a list of places that are not safe. Um, and I think I've said before, um, I feel like this privileges certain people in terms of jumping the priority list. And I think ultimately, that needs to be a different process where there's pressure put on DPW not coming up through this group. And again, we need to fix our process. We need to make it more clear for residents, but I, I would not vote in favor of, of increasing the funds for uh, a set. So Anna, your hand is back up. So here's where I'm stuck because first off, we're sep we're gonna I'm asking us to separate because you are you all are absolutely correct. We cannot ask to prioritize a DPW project, right? So ignore that, please. Um, if, because I know that we can't do that. So where I'm stuck is that because this project is over 10,000, it gets sent to JC people. And then it went to TAC, but TAC says, well, you have to be able to pay for this. And so that again, it goes back to JCPC. And then TAC also was saying it needs to go through council. So, so while I recognize that the process is not all our problem, I think it's important to also recognize that this is the process that folks were given. And so, so I think that like we, we do have a responsibility to address the parts that we're able to do. And so then where I'm suggesting adding to DPW, what's challenging is like, all right, well, if I, we can't, have an independent project, but then we also can't change budget knowing that this project would eat up the entire budget. What is the solution? Like, what is the answer? And I don't know, I don't know. So for a... So I, um, 
So I'm probably going to repeat a lot of what people have said, but just living where I live and biking on middle and actually having my kid bike to school on 116. I don't let her go on the bike lane on 116. I make her go on the sidewalk the whole way to Crocker. The only only way I would see prioritizing anything like this is the fact that I think it's really a great experience and uh, independence for kids to be able to bike to school and walk to school when they live so close by. So I don't even know, like, I don't know how things are prior prioritized in town. I'm not even I'm not even speaking to Anna's request to increase the amount, but I'm just speaking to what do residents do and who decides that and who decides to prioritize. And um, um, and who like, you know, in this case, we had we had these residents get together and have this petition signed and we had Anna help them. But how does someone else who has no idea that they can do something like this, how do they petition for things like this for their kids to be able to walk to school or even to just be able to walk on the street? So it's just my comment. So Mandy then Irv. Um, let Irv go first. I'm still looking up for a document. Okay. Irv, so uh, Alex has the wording at, from the earlier one, by the way. <laughs> yeah, go on, Irv. So when I when I look at this, um, I just want to make sure if my assumptions are correct. Is that are we voting to um, recommend this fifty thousand dollars? That's the first question. The 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 second part of that for me is that. Um, uh, if we are doing that, um, then I have severe reservations about that. Uh, I would rather change the language and the, the wording of that particular um, to say that um, uh, we um, recommend um, that um, the um, um, uh, that any funds expe uh, expended be uh, first endorsed by tax. Um, as an expenditure. And, and that way I would feel a little bit more um, comfortable with it and not feeling like one member or any members of this committee or of the town council could be seen as being privileged in any kind of way. Mandy? Thank you. What I was looking for was our town manager goal document for the year because um, uh, I under our community engagement goal, which is one of the not the policy goals, but the management goals, is developing a list of future road and sidewalk repairs that is available to the public and updated regularly. Um, and that is in there because the council has expressed some frustration about not being able to see that list themselves, let alone anyone in the public. Um, and so it is specifically set forth in his goals this year to not just develop that list, but make it accessible to everyone and update it regularly, which I think will help um, residents see if studies and stuff like that, that's repairs and all, we can maybe add to that the studies and, and future sidewalk projects and all the, as we move forward and get those on there because this has been not just for South Amherst residents, for all Amherst residents, just frustration about no one knows what's on that list or where on the list anything is. And so, you know, I, I'm still not sure it's JCPC's job to do anything other than say, this needs to go to TAC for, for adding into or discussion as to where on the priority list such a study would be. Um, in terms of the study priority list, but I, I did want JCPC members to know the town manager's goals are essentially to not just create that list, but daylight that list and update it regularly for this coming year. Alex. Yeah, that's actually a really good segue for what I was going to say. So in the five or six years that I've been on JCPC, every year we're talking about roads and sidewalks and ever since the resident request was added. It's 
almost always been a sidewalk request. And so, and I, and I think we get sort of stuck in the middle of not really being the right, like, I'm not sure that's what we were contemplating when we originally started the resident request idea and it's unfair to the public. And I think we on JCPC have also felt like, you know, there's like IT is like a black box. Nobody really understands like what all <laughs> goes into the IT budget. I think the same is sort of around roads and sidewalks. So I, I don't know if it makes sense for us to make a recommendation that maybe sort of reinforces what the goal already is for the town manager that like we as a body are seeing these requests coming in and there needs to be a clearer articulated process as well as um, you know the list of projects and priorities and just maybe sort of reinforcing that as a recommendation to the town manager that it's it's impacting our ability as a committee as well and so we recommend that. So this would be an add to, um, I'm gonna, I don't wordsmith well on the fly, but recommend that the town manager uh, make the process and prioritization of decisions about roads and sidewalk safety um, transparent to the public and provide a pathway for people to uh, raise issues. I mean, right now it's supposed to be it goes to TAC for prioritization. If they move it up the list, it's supposed to go to DPW to put on the list of things to do. That doesn't always happen quite that way. <laughs> um, but so we could expand this paragraph, not to just send it out to the netherworld to, to reinforce that goal. Um, so, so, hey, Mandy. I was just going to say, instead of recommend, we could use the word we endorse the we endorse. council's goal for whatever whatever the language in the council goal is for that that goal on that and and maybe the recommend or suggest that um, planning studies or studies sidewalks whatever we call these studies for new sidewalks be added to that list or as a separate category or something, not just we're going to pave these sidewalks this year and these roads this year, but here's our list of studying for new sidewalks and stuff. Anna. Yeah, so I think what's hard is, is the study component of it, right? Like I think, so TAC has a, or TSO has a public way review process that was sent to me by TAC the second time that we took this project to them. Um, and I think that there isn't a lot of clarity around the specifics, the study component of shifting a road, right? And so I think that it's definitely clear that that needs to be part of the, the process. Um, and, and there's like many, many steps in that because I think that what, what happened in this case is, I think it was Rob and Lisa, you know, brought it forward to Guilford who, who said, well, you have to do a study. So like, it's not on the list because you have to do a study because there's too many steps, right? What I'm uncomfortable with in the report is saying it needs to first go to TAC because it has been to TAC twice. And so I think that that's, definitely take that out. Um, the other part I do, I mean, I, I would say, I, I understand where you're coming from, Alex, in terms of changing a department head's budget. I, I think for me, adding a, an increase to it, even if it was 20, just to allow for at least for, for more than one study, if that's feasible. The other part of it is we do know that capital is gonna be swished for the next five years. And so I don't anticipate extra requests like this being treated rightfully so. Um, you know, I, I think that there's gonna be even more scrutiny in the future. And so I think that for me, adding this this year allows it to be considered by TAC uh, in terms of, adding it to their priority for, for study, not, not for actual change. And I think that's the part is like, it might not be a sidewalk, but they, they, they need to study that area. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's my challenge. I do think that the, I, I, I would ask, I would hope that we could, you know, increase that funding to make it possible for, for them to go to TAC and say, we know that DPW has study funding. We would like for you to use it for Middle Street. Um, and, you know, I think we didn't know that we even could do that at the beginning of this process. So that's helpful, but it's, yeah, the spiral of it is, is challenging. So I, I wanna, let me just jump in because I think 
what I'm hearing is most people would not support an explicit increase in DPW for this study. But there is, um, if we change the wording that we're recommending a further discussion by DPW and TAC for possible support and prioritization, and then we add and we uh, endorse the council, and then we add the wording um, that there needs, it needs to be much clearer on how you get on the list, what's prioritized and what has been on the list. So we expand the whole paragraph to address the lack of clarity on that sends people in a circle um, and rather than recommending a specific dollar increase because there actually isn't in the as far as I can see in the budget there isn't room for a dollar increase unless DPW wants to revise its ask and say we have three things we want to study this year so that was my one question it was also a question to Sean because in the past Guilford sometimes does have study money I just don't know I never have known quite where he gets it from that wasn't yeah. explicitly asked for. I mean, it just appears. <laughs> so, yeah. so he's a good bureaucrat. That's great. <laughs> no, he's you mean squirreling it. It's you squirrel it away in your left hand drawer, or your right hand drawer, right? <laughs> so, so I, I um, Kathy, I, I agree with what you said. If we can word it that way, that is something that I can go along with. I think that's appropriate. It's an appropriate response to this particular situation, especially the whole thing about. Um, making uh, that tax can't be circular. This whole process cannot be circular. No citizen of Amherst could should be put in the situ uh, in, a, in a situation where they they feel like they're getting the runaround. That should not happen. That should not occur. And we as uh, citizens and you, Mandy and Kathy uh, and Anna, need to make sure that that doesn't happen. Because that's the most frustrating thing for a citizen to experience is that their government is not being responsive, but they're, they're, being, they're, they're, they're taking you on a round trip to nowhere. And that shouldn't happen. And you three can, make, can do something about that. So, Sean, I see your hand is up, and I also realize that we're approaching, we actually just went past the witching hour for you. Is that correct? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, we will definitely take a look at the resident capital request in the off cycle and, and make some improvements to it for um, for next time. Um, and I'll probably work with Kathy to you know get feedback on, on those improvements before we go live next year. Um, and the, I will say goodbye, and Kathy, I did email it to you so or email it to you and Sonia so you both have the the last version of what we were working on okay so so Sean has to leave so we're segueing so um, unless I hear what I heard was consensus we can put it to a vote but it's changing the wording to soften it not to go to TAC first um, and I'll send a paragraph out once I draft it to everyone but I don't, I'm not hearing support on increasing funding to DPW explicit with a mention of this specific study. Um, it, we might be able to say, you know, consideration whether DPW has adequate funding for studies in the future or something. I don't know what kind of wording. Um, so uh, Alex, you know, I know there, um, I want to see whether we can reach closure on this, but I'm totally, I'm not trying to close down conversation. <laughs> yeah. I would say Jennifer hasn't weighed in. So okay. I, you do, I Jennifer. Would, yeah. Um, I'm in favor of what you uh, described, Kathy. I'm, I'm on board with that. I have a comment maybe of a slightly different nature and maybe this isn't that important and it's splitting hairs, but um, the way this was worded about improving pedestrian and biker safety and to explore the possibility of increasing walkability through a sidewalk or bike lane. It's my understanding that bike lanes and sidewalks are mutually exclusive in terms of who they serve. Like pedestrians don't belong in a bike lane, cyclists don't belong on the sidewalk. So I don't think we can address pedestrians and bike lanes with one, uh, sorry, pedestrians and cyclists with one thing. So I don't know if that, I don't, cause I, I just, I don't know if that even matters or if we need to worry about that, but just that's well, my I don't think we need, I guess we don't need to, reword the proposal right now but if, if you turned it into a one lane 
one way street, you could accommodate both. Um, so that's that's the issue. How can you on a narrow street accommodate uh, people and bikes and cars more safely? So I think that is the whole issue. What is What do you do on narrow streets where there is no shoulder? So Alex. Um, thanks. This may be implicit in whatever language we come up with, but um, I would also love to gain clarity. Like, do sidewalk requests even belong in JCPC? I mean, maybe the answer is yes, but I feel like all we ever do is go cool and then send them somewhere else. And and so, if it really belongs here, I, I, that's fine. We need to create a process around it. But I would just love for someone somewhere. <laughs> To, to provide clarity so that we can then maybe include it in whatever we do in the future. And, and I think that's, there's this simple sentence that maybe that we should get together in the summer and address this resident request because what it's been sidewalks and crosswalks are the biggies. There's been one exception, I guess the Crocker Farm study was the one, but, but maybe a couple, but you know, and then each time this comes up, you know, the crosswalks become, they're not on the list or they are on the list or somewhere else is on the list. And if if that's not a doorway on the resident proposal at all, then people shouldn't be sent through that door. So um, it just, it shouldn't be sure, just put it in because it's always gonna end up in this. So I think we can expand it and I, and then, one thing that came up, not in JCPC, but at the Council on a Budget Participation Commission on a, should there be a policy to try to take at least one resident proposal a year, depending on priority? You know, do, do we, is this a vehicle for people to, to do this? And then how would you judge them? That's not an issue I wanna take up here at all, but it is, a, we've opened that door. And if no one can ever get through it, it feels like it's not really a doorway. Um, so Anna. I can just answer Alex's question briefly. So it's it's not the sidewalk, it's that JCPC cannot say where sidewalks should go. So like that's, from, from what I understood from my stuff about my work on this proposal, um, it was that it's really supposedly TAC that is determining where um, and, and, and JCPC would be the funding mechanism hypothetically, but we can't be making the decision as to which one comes first, right? So like if you read Guilford's original proposal for study funding, he says to move resident requests towards completion, like that's his phrasing. Um, he doesn't say which requests or anything uh, because he knows we can't prioritize some over, like, you know what I mean? Like we are not the, the place deciders. Um, which is, that's why, that was the impetus for my initial change of like, I'm not gonna say where, I just, yeah. So anyway, thank you. Does that answer your question kind of? Yeah, it's so, like a so, sort of sidewalks, but not really. So I will rewrite this as I've described, send this one paragraph out. And I think we reached that we're not going to increase DPW's budget. He may have money for this is what I'm saying on it. If this rises to the top, it's not necessarily that he doesn't have money and that that's over in the DPW world to work out prioritization. Does that work for everyone? Yes. Okay, now I have to figure out maybe, Sonia, can you share the screen to continue where Sean was? Because I'd have to find it in my email to open it up, um, which I can probably do, but because I think the remaining substantive ones I had were for, all from you, Alex, where you flagged a couple of, no, I'm, I'm not, it, where you flagged a couple others we recommend um, as, as sentences as we went through. Yeah, the only, the only other one actually kind of mirrors the one where I think people decided was fine. Um, at the top of page five, it says, however, members recommend um, that the town manager make it clear to the public when presenting the capital improvement program and the five-year plan that achieving this plan will require some difficult choices. Again, just it's, a, it's saying that we made this as a recommendation. We need to discuss it as a recommendation. So however people keep it, don't keep it, doesn't matter to me. I mean, it does matter to me, obviously, but. No, <laughs> I no, I think, it, I think it's good if we're recommending it that it should have re at least have been discussed. Um, so that that was probably language from last year also, but it wasn't something we discussed this year. So if people, again, 
leaving it in or leaving it out, I'm I'm comfortable in either direction. Um, Did you say it's at the top of page five? It's at the top of page five, just before JCP, the things JCP thoughts on CIP presentation. It's the last sentence. I must have wrong page numbers. Um, I think that's- mine, Mine's my edited copy as well, Jennifer. So it could be the bottom of four maybe because I, I have edits on mine. Gotcha, yes, I see it. <laughs> You know, I, I realize some of this is I, I naturally put some wording in like that because in the finance committee, we cringe when we look at these five-year budgets and I go, oh, every operating budget has been squeezed so we can afford the capital side of it. And then I go, oh, and the capital budget right now is not completely in balance, although I know we will bring it. Then I think, so there's some choice, to me, it's there are just some choices ahead because um, we're, not, we're not looking at five years worth of perfectly balanced budgets. So I don't know what's going on with me. I'm, I'm on this laptop that doesn't have all the programs loaded. Okay, so it's all right. I think we flagged the sentence so people have it. Um, so the so are people comfortable leaving that sentence in, I guess, as a recommendation? Yes. So then the other issue that was raised, Jennifer raised whether we want to call ourselves the committee or we want to call ourselves the JCPC. And I am the first to admit that I am never entirely consistent, but I've just always gravitated to committee sounding easier out of my mouth than JCPC, and I don't care. So I can go back, your edit, Jennifer, systematically change it. Every time it said the committee, you said the JCPC. So I am fine if people would like to do that. Then we had an interesting one, Farah capitalized five year with a hyphen, five-year plan because it is a plan. Jennifer made it small initial caps. And I can do I can do one or the other, but I can't do both. Um, and I tend to, if there's something called a five-year plan, I tend to capitalize it um, because it's a, a document. Um, so that's just my style preference. The same way I do the town manager, if we're talking about a specific person, I always capitalize both of those. Um, so um, but on committee, I'd be half of the time I say we did something and then other times I say the committee did something. It could be the committee members and I really don't care, but I'm happy to do make a change if people would prefer it. Jennifer. I, I just prefer JCPC because there are so many committees in this town and we reference other committees in this document. So just to make it more clear. Also, I have a I have a personal pet peeve about overcapitalization. And if you do say the committee, it doesn't need to be capitalized. But JCPC does get capitalized because it's an abbreviation. So anyway, I, I, just whatever we pick, it should just be consistent so that we're consistently so that people understand what they're reading. Um, and as for a five year plan, I mean, given that it's the name of a plan and the name of a document, I agree it should be capitalized. It should have a hyphen and five should be spelled out. And again, that should be consistent so that people know what, okay. what, what they're looking at. But if for some reason we're talking about a generic, a five-year plan that's not referring to the specific document, then that doesn't need to be capitalized. Okay. Um, I have another non-grammar style question. On the original page five in the, the recommended capital plan section, there's a sentence that says, the new school is shown in FY26, although there is uncertainty about this date. What does that mean? And what is the uncertainty? If, if the renovation addition were the approved choice, Jennifer, the school won't open in 26. It gets pushed off. It can't because the school is going to be occupied. So I can take that out because we're aiming for 26, which will circumscribe our choices. We still have renovation addition, but I can take that wording out. I mean, I can take 26 is the goal. I, so. I think, Kathy, I think it's because that's the aim for when the borrowing would happen. But if there's a little delay, as we're seeing in the library at this point, we thought the borrowing would be FY23, but it looks like it might be FY24. And so it's a reference to when would the payments actually start on a new school building? And it's complete, you know, we're aiming for them to start in FY26, just like we were aiming for the library to start in FY22, but they might not actually, 
well, they start in FY23 for the library because you borrow in FY22, but that remains uncertain depending on when grants come in, when you actually need to, and all of that. So I think that's that's how I read it as the date is the borrowing payments date are uncertain. And again, I didn't, I added those two words because the, the wording from last year said FY25, and we're clearly not going to make it an FY25. <laughs> you know, I mean, so it's it's one of these where each each piece of this thing is on this tight deadline that things might not happen, but I'm happy to just say the goal is, you know, scheduled for FY26 is accurate. Um, so. Okay, but if you wanted to reflect some uncertainty, I, I just, I, I would want to make it clear that the uncertainty is about the borrowing. So you could say something like the new school is shown through FY26, although it's there's uncertainty about which fiscal year the borrowing would begin in or something. You, like you know what? I'm just going to end it with a period after FY26. That's easier rather than writing more words. <laughs> and, and I'm just I'm going to I'm going to butt in quickly because it addresses this. So, Jennifer, yeah. one of the edits that I sent to Kathy was on the first page, the third paragraph, where it says the draft five year plan includes significantly larger um, deficit starting in FY24, as shown in the draft table below, I added language that says the larger deficits reflect both potential borrowing and the use of 4.5 million of reserves for the four capital projects. Three of the four projects are not yet fully developed and the timing, actual borrowing and cost of each project will continue to be developed. So that. Yeah, so, and, and I thought that was good wording just to say, you know, there's, there's uncertain, I mean, DPW doesn't even have a place yet. <laughs> You know, so I mean, these these are in the budget, but uncertainty is is an understatement. Irv, you need. I, I was sure. uh, I was beginning to develop a PTSD uh, in relationship to a dissertation, which uh, my committee would argue argue over hyphen hyphens and periods and <laughs> etc. and. The question that I would always say is, is it a difference that makes a difference? And um, because at some point a decision has to be made, it is a different, is it a difference that makes it makes a difference? If, if not, let's move on. Well, with that, um, I think we've addressed substantive issues. I have good copy edits. Um, J Jennifer also sent some that Barrage sharp eyes missed or Alex's did. People found some missing words, some missing periods, some odd punctuation, um, you know, where semicolons were used sometimes, but not always. Um, so what I was going to ask is whether people want to say this report substantively is done. They're comfortable with it, with this one paragraph I will send. And then entrust me to take all the copy edits and then we would not have to meet next week, but I see your hand is up, Alex. Um, so. Yeah, I just wanna make two comments that I think that you were planning on incorporating. And I just wanna make sure that nobody thinks that, like nobody thinks that they're substantive changes. Okay, um, sure. One was um, on the first page about the ladder truck. And I just changed that language a little bit to say more that we recommend inquiring if a smaller stick ladder truck, which typically runs at a lower cost of a million rather than a platform ladder truck at a proposed cost of 1.5 million could meet the specific needs of Amherst, which, because we didn't actually talk to the fire department about it. So I like it was, an, it was a conversation after they left, but I just wanted it to be a little softer of, we didn't have the conversation. So we're suggesting they look at it. So I just wanted to soften that a little bit. Um, and then the other piece was, on page of mine, it's page four, where um, it the initial language says, except for two recommended changes or modifications listed in the introduction of our report that we submit the proposed project request. And I changed that because I think we support all of the requests. We just have some recommendations. So I changed that to say the committee supports the proposed project request and offer two recommendations as noted in the introduction. So I just shifted that a little bit. I just wanna make sure, was, you know, People don't consider those substantive. That was Kathy's looking at Alex's and thought it was an improvement, but I'm glad you raised it because those words are going to appear in this next. Um, so I've got three sets of edits to merge together, but in this case, it, it was an improved clarity, I thought, on what we were saying. 
um, you know, the ladder truck issue, my understanding is that Paul is going to have a conversation and make a decision whether we need the higher level of ladder truck that's been proposed or whether we could live with the Northampton. And clearly that's beyond our skill set to make that decision. So it is when he saw it was a five hundred thousand dollar difference, he thought it was worth a further a further discussion. <laughs> um, so if that so so what I'm going to propose um, that we do, uh, we can take a formal vote, which would be fine with me if I go around the room that we're in support of the report with the revisions as discussed. And um, if I would make that motion, if there's a second motion to if there's a second of that motion, and then what I would do is I would do all of these edits send you out the final edited copy in case there's any one more thing. But meanwhile, Sean can put the tables in so it, it becomes a final report. So I will make a motion that we take a vote to accept the report with the revisions as discussed, um, including that I will send everyone out a paragraph on the resident proposal so they can see my quickly worded one on what that is. Um, is there a second? Second. Yeah. Um, then I'll take a roll call vote. Um, Mandy. Aye. Kathy is a yes. Alex. Aye. Farah. Yes. Anna. I didn't hear you, Anna. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. And Irv. Aye. It's unanimous. I want to thank everyone. I'm, and actually, I want to thank everyone who sent in. At first, I thought, oh, no, we have edits from everyone. But they were you all picked up slightly different things. So it was it was useful to get the feedback. Um, and the next step, then, it will be a final report. We submit it directly to the town manager. I write a one page ish, or one and a half page cover to the town council to say we did it and here are the main things they should know about they get a copy of it but the next it goes directly to Paul I mean there's not a midway step on this so I thank everyone I mean this is not for those of you who are first time in this process it's not an easy thing to jump into um, the level of numbers when we're looking at five years worth of all these departments proposals going out with your eyes kind of blur over with vehicles. Um, the good news is we weren't giving uh, the initial the way Alex, I guess Mandy, the first time you were on it, where the initial proposals were $6 million above the amount available. <laughs> And and then and and you had no guidelines on what to cut because everything had been rated a priority. So that this is this is a, this is a much easier process than staring at saying, well, do we we do three police trucks, two dump trucks? Who? So I I think the process is such a healthier process that we're going through with with what the town staff and that's thanks to you, Sonia to all the department heads, to what Sean is doing, that you're really working hard before it ever gets to us to have it be discussions around the margins rather than on what doesn't look like a potential budget at all. So I want to thank everyone and I will do my best to get everything accurately into a document and get it back. Today is Thursday. I should be able to do it by Monday um, and we do not need to meet next week. This is, we are adjourned. So the, the discussion has been a JCPC possible convening in the summer to talk about the resident proposals. So we won't send anything out right now and I'll find out when might be good for Sean and whether Paul wanted to, would wanna join. Um, you know, what are these supposed to be? How should they work? Can we make any improvements? Um, and we'll wait till the budget is put to rest before we have that. Yes, Anna, thank you. Would that be, so if we come up with an idea for it, does that go to Paul or is, that's not something that needs to go to TSO, right? Just goes no, right the actual, to Paul. So it's not a resident, it's how should the resident- No, I understand. Does the process change need to just happen through Paul? 
or is it just it doesn't need to go well, through? I'll have to go back. Alex was there when this was full of first, but we only open this up. Um, it's it's not ancient history that we open this up. So it was a trial to see how it would work. And would JCPC make a recommendation? Does the does it need to go to the council? Does it need to just go to Paul? We were under a town meeting and select board system when we did it and JCPC worked in a different way then. So I can find out if we think it should be fixed in some way or changed in some way, where does that recommendation go? I, I can find that out. My only thought is the outreach component might tap it in a little bit more. Um, yeah. yeah. Mandy. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I think it depends on what the recommendations are. Certain things can just be done because it's an application to JCPC, right? And so we get to control in some sense what that looks like in a sense. Other things might have council implications, others might have managers. So I think it just depends on where we end up. So thank you. Um, I think we can adjourn at 624. So Sonia can go have dinner if she hasn't had it. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for staying with us. And thank you, uh, everybody. And thank you, Irv, for your comments on when things don't make a difference, let's not spend time on it. I, I love that. I, if I could capture exactly what you said, well, I'll listen to the tape. I like that a lot. Um, so we we I think we worked very well together and I totally enjoyed the group this year. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank and we you. are thanks everyone. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks everybody. Bye.